Everyone, so Shunui and Luad come out like very soon. Uh, the problem with these decks is that we don't have the meta PRs out for them. So we don't have uh, Selgeon and Shinri, right? Shinri. Those are pretty important for both decks. You pretty much slot in four cards for them. So what do we do? We can't copy like the best decks out for it. We also don't have Bracing Angel Ladder, right? Which is pretty good to counter Shinri with. So what do we do? Well, I kind of whipped up two decks just using my brain, but also just using cores from like uh, the, the previous results that we had before and just added in some tech and here you go, right? This is the lazy version. So first off, let's start off with Shinri. What are we doing with Shinri? Let's talk about it. So first off, your ride line, you're just replacing the grade two with a Shoujo Doji because the Shoujo Doji just is great for grade two gaming. And then when you go down into the main deck, right, you change he is actually one important thing. So, your alternate stride, uh, stride Shirinui that you used to discard to stride unless you draw a card. Uh, you replace it, you can replace it for this card, right? This is really good. Uh, just because, you know, on your stride you get to draw, but when you ride your grade 3, you also get to draw. But one thing about the Shirinui is that that one is a stealth card. So, you can actually call that off your Shoujo Doji. And if you do, you actually just like can straight up win that grade 2 game pretty easily, and it converts into a pretty good card later on because it gets, like, big power, right? Bigger power. So that is something to consider if you want to sacrifice, you know, the ability to just draw one extra card uh, when you discard this for grade 3, or do you want to maybe a better grade 2 game, right? Then the rest of it, this is kind of cool. So this is, like, you know, your, like, se Seki, Seki A, right? And then you got your Furai. Uh, these are all your core cards, great. You just run a bunch of them for now. You don't need to run any fancy techs yet. Uh, and then there are other things like, yeah, the PG, you know, Stride Fodder, and then this Tenre, right? This is all from the Stride decks. You don't need to change any of this. They're all very, very good cards already. The one thing you should do add, though, is the uh, Izaso. Izaso? Because everyone's been asking me, why do you run this in the deck, right? It only works when you have Shujuri. Well, this deck, this, this card basically helps you win the Grade 2 game. Because that is going to be what Vanguard is for a while. Because a lot of people are going to be playing Shinui. A lot of people are going to play Luad. Uh, and then if you ever face up against the old Stride deck sets as well, you will play the Grade 2 game because you want to Stride first. Because your first Stride is just better, right? And then you will just have cards like this guy. He's a Sal, for example. That will just help you win. Because you'll stay on Shujo Doji. And that means this guy is active. And this guy can search your deck for more resources and convert your Counter Blast into things. Because that's what the Grade 2 game is all about. Uh, until you're ready to ride up and win, right? And then, again, Tenray also helps with, the, with that Grade 2 game. Because it comes in play and draws a card. So, those are the two main cards that help you with the Grade 2 game. And this is this is just... Either Sao is just the, that one question that I keep on asking. Why why shouldn't we run this? Why is it running? Well, that, that's the reason why. It helps you in Grade 2 game. Grade 2 game is going to be very, very important uh, in the next... Whatever Shurunui is better. Which is... Probably going to be a for a while, so you're going to learn that if you play Shinri. Uh, and the last card is, since we don't have the Shinri, right, so how do we soul charge cards? Well, there are qu quite a couple of options. I chose Hitom, uh, Hitorima, because it's a grade 2, right? So it's not grade 1, you, you have like less boosters now, which is a bit annoying. Uh, if you had the Shinri, you have a total of like, 11 boosters, which is like great. But because you don't have it, you have only like 8 boosters. Uh, but this guy is cool just because it soul charges 1. Uh, when it comes to play, it's a great two. You can slam it down and just bash with it, uh, and then just intercept with it, right? One of the key things about like the matchup against like the mirror, for example, is you need to get rid of things. Uh, great twos very easy to get rid of because you can intercept. That's pretty much it. Also gets 5k, which is pretty significant. Like the 8k is like kind of lame, right? You're like oh, 8k doesn't hit anything, but it gets a f when it comes to the play, you soul charge one and you get 5k for the turn. So it becomes 13. So if you go first, you can smash a grade grade one and make him feel bad. This hits like really nice numbers there. Uh, and then also when you boost with something, it'll be like 13 plus 8. So it's 21. So again, that's another very annoying number. I'll have to drop 15k guards to that. It'll kind of help you win that grade, uh, grade two game. Some cards that people have been like saying is we got the Forktail, which is pretty cool. You come into play, you search the top seven and grab a stealth card which is basically the whole deck uh and then you put it into soul so you, it's targeted soul charge it helps you compress your deck one problem with this card is that it doesn't remove itself from the board it stays there so that means it becomes a dominate target in the mirror uh and then the next one is also people run a kagechika kind of the same idea it's generate soul you put a card from your drop into soul 
Uh, but apart from that, doesn't do anything else. I think this is one of the weakest options available. So pretty much Hitomari, uh, Hitorima is my uh, favorite choice out of all the choices we have, which is these three, right? And then the rest of the deck is pretty much that. We don't have ladder. If we do have the ladder, you basically can take out one of the one of these guys, Hitorima, for a ladder, and then I think you're good. But you know, some of the decks in uh, some of the Shinoi decks just don't run the ladder because at some point you just play the Gracie game anyway, and just you know that's it. The game's decided on first drive, so it is like that, right? Uh, then the stride X pretty simple, sim just just put on the stride, right? So that's pretty much just the deck. Uh, you just it's, it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, now that you have the energy generator as well, this deck is insane. You just draw so many cards, and I think it's great. It's, it's really easy to play, and you get a bunch of decks. Uh, oh, one thing, trigger lineup. So I just run, I just like draws, right? Draws kind of help you out in that great two game matchup. You hit a draw, it means more resources. So you can continue playing, you have a high chance of playing. Some people just run fronts, right? Fronts are pretty cool because you just hit big and just smash your opponent. But I just went with draws. This is kind of up to you. I've seen people run like three draws, three fronts, or even four fronts, and they just take out a crit. All right, so up to you with that. Uh, the other deck we have is Luad. So one funny thing about Luad is that this doesn't have Selgaon, right? But someone actually did really well with this deck uh, in Japan. And that was Riku, who came second at Japan Nationals with this deck. And this deck is actually straight out, like, you can just play this in English. You can straight up play this in English. Let's kind of go through it, right? And some of the tech. So, you don't need to change anything to the ride line. It's just everything from Luad. Uh, and then you just put in the, like, do I need to say it? Like, Luad, Mofesa, you know, the PG. Uh, and then the Abyssal Owl, actually important, because you want the counter charge. Uh, and then you want the Semi-Ass. Semi-Ass, semi yeah. So this, this is very important. I'll kind of go into how this deck functions. It's kind of unique in how to play it. Uh, and then some of the techs that they've put in is, well, this one is also from the deck too. Uh, it's just nice. It's like an intercept. Again, if intercept means getting rid of stuff from the board. So against like Shinui, that's pretty good. Uh, it's also like a 10k shield. You just straight up a 10k shield as well. So you can slam it down, 10k shield, pretty nice numbers. One of the things in this deck that it has two of is actually Paris. And this is... Pretty good in JP because they have a deck called Migro, which attacks five times, and you get like with this card, your fifth, the fifth attack is basically a PG, right? You on the on the fifth attack or higher, you basically bind this card from the board, and then you just you can't be hit, right? You can't be hit, so very nice. But against Nubatama, it's also not bad, right? Because think about how many attacks does Nubatama get? It's like dominate, dominate, so two attacks already, and then like the max combo is like. Without an OT is, you know, your two restanders, bang on attacks, and true. So that's seven attacks. So if you have this guy or this this lady on the board, you get to at least PG one of them. And they hit pretty big as well. So having one of these PGs is fine. But you might be asking, Kai, that's like really dumb because they'll just get rid of it. But that's fine true, right? Because if they if they dominate this card with their Shunui, it becomes 10k. doesn't hit anything. It hits a regard. It's fine. Right? It's fine. And then they waste like... There's stride dominate on this. That's they get 5k from it. So this is 15. It's actually not bad. 15 to your 13. That's a 5k shield. It's not a 10k shield. It really hurts when you have to guard 10k. That's the that's the biggest problem against the dominate. But if it's only five, any card in your hand, fine. So they've wasted like a one of the they wasted two attacks basically on this card. Uh, if they don't give this 10k, it only is 11. So even better, right? So yeah, they they, they basically because of its bad numbers. It kind of saves you hand in a way. So running this is still not bad against all the sheer noise that are out there. And basically all the other rogue decks, like even like Bastion or that, that big attack that's gonna come at you. Get rid of that. Right? Get rid of that. So pretty cool. Uh still run two of the and then you have the painkillers, because it's your kind of draw engine, just kinda of soul blast out everything. And then one of these uh maples. If you have it, you have it. If you don't, you know, but it's free fodder, why not? How you play this deck is actually quite interesting. Currently, there's like two ways to play Luad. I think the SCA side focuses more on Drag Driver, where they just make multi-attacks of Drag Drivers and just bash you like what a Stride deck will do. I saw JP side and Riku, how he played this deck was pretty interesting, is that you focus more on Drag Stride up, and what you do is you keep your opponent on like two or three damage. So you basically like damage deny them heavily, and then you go into this dude who comes in with a crit and like Sentinel Restrict and like pump him up like big, like heaps of power and stuff. And then your opponent like has to like throw a bunch of cards down to guard or have a sanctitude. But if they don't have the sanctitude, like they sanctitude you once, it's fine. Go into it again, right? And again until like your opponent's dead. 
But you just go into this, control the damage a lot until like, so they can't do anything. And then you kill them with like one blow, which is pretty cool. And this is why the semi -S is like really important because this just kind of builds your field for you. Uh, and you just kind of have to make sure you set up those turns. Uh, make sure you have the Luat in hand and all that. So uh, that's, it's it's a pretty interesting way. And I think that's kind of one of the, the ways that Luat can currently play this deck because we just don't have the cell gods. The cell gods are so important. Uh, if we do have the cell gods, right, then we can go into things like how Chad built his deck, which was more focused on orders. You run the Minerva order, and then you can kind of just, you know, have a strong grade two game of like the uh, the order, order generics and all that. But that's kind of like a totally different build and a different way to play. But I think Riku's way of playing is like controlling your opponent's damage, killing them off with one blow, uh, is, is very, very strong. And you can still play the great two game with this deck. You Not as strong as Shinui, I think you'll just eventually lose, but you'll get to a point where you feel like you can write up, and then you give your opponent a bad first turn where like they have nothing really to dominate. Because remember, on the Shinui's first stride, uh, if you ride up first, they don't get to call anything. So if all you have is nothing, they don't get to call anything, they don't get to dominate anything. Or if you just have like really bad cards for them to dominate, uh, that also works too. But yeah, focus here is just everything is kind of removable. Um, everything is, you can kind of get rid of it on an intercept or they just pop themselves. Uh, it all works out like that. So those are the two decks, right? Shinui and Luat. I think they're both very, very strong. Um, especially with no Migo right now. It's, it's pretty big. Uh, I think both decks, again, like, There'll be lots of people playing them, so you gotta be prepared. You gotta be prepared. That's it for me. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, and I'll see you all next time. Okay, the, the deck codes are also in the uh, in in the description, so if you want to see that, it's JP, but it's a link, so you can't get it wrong. Right? All right, bye.